G'day fellas and welcome to a Beyond All Reason build order guide. This is the 22 minute calamity build order guide. However, it doesn't have to be a calamity at 22 minutes that you go for. I want to start just by cavitying that. Mainly because you have other options. You can go for T3, you can go for T2, you can help out in the mid. Uh, you can look to challenge water for, with, with an air uh, play if you want to do that. There, there's so many options for you in this position. Essentially what I'm giving you here is the framework for a way that you can play in this position on Supreme straight without actually taking the water and without contesting it uh, and utilizing the economy that you've got uh, to, to power through and really provide for your team. So without further ado, let's get to it. We're going to start off by playing as the core. Core is really important when we're doing this uh, for a couple of reasons, but you could easily do it as the arm as well. Uh, mainly, we're not taking advantage of wind here uh, to, to the extent that we normally would. Uh, so arm isn't as important. So we're going to start it off with two mexes just by taking the closest ones and then go into three wind turbines. Uh, depending on whether the wind is bad or whether the wind is good, depends on whether we add a fourth wind turbine. But I, I very clearly make the distinction here to add these three turbines in straight away, just so that we know to get them straight away. And then we go out to the, the mechs. And from here, you can see that we've thrown down a bot lab and a whole bunch of uh, wind turbines. We've put them down uh, nice and neatly. And the idea is that once our commander comes out into this position, we don't want him to move. And we also don't want him to block any of these buildings being put down. So before, because our wind is at 19, this means we don't have to add in a fourth wind turbine. If our wind was sitting down somewhere around here, I'd be looking to add a fourth wind turbine and even potentially a fifth one, depending on how bad it gets. Now, now we talk about the units that we make because fr from here, it's very simple, right? All the commander does is the commander makes wind and whenever you've got the energy to do it, you're going to uh, assist your lab. That's it. So our first thing that we're going to open up with is a Lazarus or a Grave Robber. A Grave Robber? Grave Digger? Grave Robber, I think it's called. And this guy is immediately going to come out and going to look to take uh, these trees. That's the most important thing for us to do because the sooner we get onto these trees, we're not relying on wind because if wind stalls right now, if wind goes down to two, we're in a really bad spot. And what this does is, I don't know exactly what the numbers are, but it feels to me about something around the region of about two to three solar collectors incoming on, on, on your energy all the time. So it's really important that you just get this out, get it started. After that, we're going to be moving into two construction bots. The first construction bot is going to come out to the north and he's going to put down all three mexes. It's going to put down in the middle of this a nano and then he's going to add in three, uh, three, um, what should we call it? Energy converters. Uh, it, it will come down after that. The second construction bot that comes out is going to take this uh, this metal and then will also put a nano on the top side of your base. It's important to remember, and I'll, I'll just pause it just to state this. When you're playing in the geo position down here on the south, normally we segment our base into two areas. We've got the first one, which is around here, and the second one, which is around here. Uh, in, when we're when we're doing in, in this position, we, we don't have that. It, we, we've got a little bit different. We've got one area here and then another area up here. And these guys can't be connected at all. So it's important that we, we remember that, we stay mobile and we just commit to putting this nano on the top side of our base because we do want to expand our economy and we want to expand it towards this top side. This is the safest part of this position. So now that we've done that, we've got additional grave robbers coming out. We want to get out to the rocks out here before an enemy comes out with a boat because if a dolphin comes in here onto the shoreline, they will deny these rocks from us. So we want to try and get them as quickly as we can. So that's what the first grave robber is going to be doing. You can see him up there. The second grave robber that comes out, obviously this is technically the third one, is going to be coming down and looking to grab these rocks here on the pond. Now you can see that Mango Nectar's already been taking a few of them. So I said, you know what? I'm just going to grab these ones here and then I'll just work out my way on energy. And now I'm going to go up to, so just, just pausing it. So we've started off with one grave robber and then we went into two construction bots. And then after that, we've gone into two more grave robbers. And now we're going into two more construction bots. And that's very specific. That is very intentional uh, that we're doing that. And the reason why we're going into two more is because we're going to be putting down our geo. And the thing is that, you know, when you think about it, right, two, it's twice as fast as one. So we want to make sure that we have got two construction bots out there. Whereas if we add a third one in, that's not going to be twice as fast. So we're losing effective uh, bonuses from having those construction bots out there. So two is, is what I call the perfect number in that situation. And then finally, we're just going to throw out a couple more grave robbers. It doesn't really matter where you stop with these guys. I feel like grave robbers are just a unit that you will always find value with, no matter where you are in this game. Whether you're reclaiming your own buildings, whether you're reclaiming trees, whether you're on the front line reclaiming, there's so many things that you can do with grave robbers. So if you, even if you want to go up to like seven or eight of them, go for it. I think in this game, I go up to about six, which I feel really comfortable with. 
Uh, and then once I've, so now that I've finished this, this nano, immediately I'm going to start working on, um, on throwing down my uh, advanced energy or my uh, energy converters. And I'm also going to throw down an energy storage, which you can see has come down here. So you ideally you want to throw down an energy uh, storage whenever you can't hold the energy. So kind of like picture the guy with the limes, that's uh, that kind of thing. But whenever you get to that point, but with energy, that's when you want to, um, that's when you want to begin uh, doing it. So I, I ran into a little bit of an issue here. So you'll, you'll see that with my, uh, my metal, I'm actually going to uh, overflow quite a bit here. I don't, I don't know, know exactly what the number is, but basically you want to get a start on your bot lab as soon as you can, just so that you can start eating at your metal because this metal, it will continue to gather. And you can see the commander is going to help reclaim 620 metal right here. So this is going to rock it up. And remember th this holds metal as well. So you can see right now I'm going to come up. So I'm, I'm about 50. I, oh, I don't actually overflow. I, I thought I overflowed. I, I didn't actually overflow this game. That's good to know, uh, but definitely a mistake for me. So we want to just get that bot lab up and we want to throw these down. Down. And the reason why we're doing this, the reason why we put these down is because not only do we have the wind turbines that have been sitting at 19, so they've been pumping out energy, but our geo is about to come online. And when that geo comes online, we want to make sure that we have front loaded all of our, uh, all, all of our energy converters so that we're uh, beginning to make metal straight away and we're not excessing. If we take a look at the stats right now for excess energy, oh, it doesn't show because technically it's overflow, but yeah, essentially you get the point. So command is going to come over here. He's going to explode. Uh, we explode him relatively close to the base here. This is a bad spot that I've, I've done this. Ideally, it should be somewhere over here, just where he's not going to hit the trees. Um, but I, I was testing something in this game and then I realized I'm not testing it. I, I basically wanted to grab this with my nano instead, but I've worked out that I want the construction power in my uh, my advanced bot lab the whole time. So now that we're doing that, so w once again, uh, we're working. So we're, we're making three, uh, we're making a nano up here. Then we're making three um, uh, energy converters. And then we're making another nano and then we're making three more energy converters and then we're making a jammer. That, that, that's essentially what we're doing up here on the top side. Meanwhile, so we're at the five minute mark now and then the bot lab is coming up and we're going to make two advanced construction bots and one twitcher. Uh, we're also going to throw down a metal storage immediately after that and we're just going to pause quickly because we're going to go take a look at our geo. And what we're doing on our geo, we're throwing down uh, energy converters and I'm putting them down like this so that if an attack does come through, hopefully it will take out all of the units with it because if the enemy focuses down one energy converter they will all explode you can see the way that they're positioned here intentionally so that they chain react uh but they kill everything around them that, that, that's essentially the plan and i'm just going to throw down six of them up here uh just so that we can utilize these. these energy converters are really important to have because any excess energy that you've got will immediately get turned to metal and then that way you're not feeding it to your team and you, you're actually using it for something so our first uh, advanced construction bot is going to be making his way up towards the first of the three metal extractors uh, up on this up on this top side here. Let's uh, let's let's turn on the play of you, um, and you can see that we're we're timing it so that when we finish this uh, when we, when we finish this uh, uh, this nano right here, we hopefully uh, should be right on time with our advanced construction bot. So that's very intentional. And now our second construction bot is going to be coming out here, and you can see that we are struggling a little bit here with our metal. Uh, but we, we've got, if anything, we've got our uh, energy converters on our side helping us out. And now, I, I've, I've, so I, I put all of my um, grave robbers in a control group. So I, I put them all in control group three. And so now that I've got my second advanced construction bot out, I, I give them the command. I say, interrupt what you're doing. You can see they've still got this command. So I issue that with spacebar and come back and reclaim the advanced bot lab, please. At the same time, I'm also making a twitcher. These guys are really important because if, if there are leaks that come through, the twitch is going to be able to, to deal with that. You can see that there are indeed some leaks coming through right now. So I can look to put down a fiend uh, or if, if the front needs help, I can always look to put down uh, some fiends and help them out with that. So now the twitches have come through. I'm about to get a huge surge in my metal. There it comes down. So as soon as I get that surge in my metal, what am I looking for? I'm looking for build power. That's the most important thing that we want to put down. A little bit of idle time right here. Let's check up towards that top side. So you can see a little bit of a mistake from here, from me here, focusing on building uh, these energy converters. So I'm going to take it back. I'm going to say just build four energy converters. That's enough. Uh, and then, then get to work on your advanced metal extractor. Uh, we've, we've got the caster up, which is going to be jamming these uh, from the shore. So if any, any cruisers come along or anything like that, look to bombard it. They're going to have a tougher time building or, or taking those out and now back towards the main base we are throwing down all of our advanced metal uh extractors and here we're going to start thinking about well we want to take uh the advanced or the geothermal power plant and we want to put it into an advanced geo how do we go about doing that considering that these guys are really slow and that's pretty far away so the answer it's going to be in an aircraft lab so what we're going to do is look to get a hercules out and the hercules 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 the hercules is going to quite literally carry our old man all the way to the geo uh but not only that the uh, Hercules also has the ability to transport construction turrets. Uh, let's let's turn these this up right now. I, I, I want a, I want a bit of music, a little bit of sound. There we go. 
So we've taken the first three. Now, we're also going to use the build power from the Twitcher. You can see he's got a build power of 125 here, so not too bad. Construction bot's also got 80, so we can bring him down and look to try and build this metal extractor uh, because we don't have any nanos down here. And that's very, very intentional. We don't want to be throwing down nanos down here. Uh, and meanwhile, our back, back here, we've just got our grave robbers that are still just... Remember, every little bit of energy that they suck up, they're just going to be turning that into metal. Uh, through through your energy converter. So really important that you have them out there still doing all of their things. Make sure they're not idling out. Uh, and we're going to throw up a jammer up on, on top of this ridge line as well. So you can see the Castro will get a pretty decent jam in here. Uh, you can't see it at the moment, but once it comes up, it will uh, be decent. And now we're all ready for our Hercules. So the Hercules is going to be picking up our advanced construction bot, taking him upstairs. Uh, and then we'll also be shift commanding in or shift queuing in the construction turrets. And we want to bring them up as well. Now, we don't really mind if we lose this position. This is fine. Ideally, what we're doing doing here is we're just making sure that this position is up until our aphis is up once our aphis is up we're fine we we don't look back once the aphis is up uh but until that point we really want to just focus on getting this up so you can see that we're going to bring those construction turrets in so we're going to bring in both of them and just put them down on the ground re reclaim our lab back here and now that our advanced construction bot is coming back here in the meantime what we're doing is throwing down more nanos because all of this build power is just sitting here you not doing anything right so we want to make sure that we are maximizing our efficiency we throw those down while the while the old man is coming back here and of course he's going to throw down a, an aphis and the, the timing here is pretty decent you can see that we're still kind of working on two things at once which is never a good idea uh, but fortunately a lot of my energy usage is, is coming through those energy converters but you can see it, it's begun to drop quite a bit here so maybe I, I could head back to the drawing board definitely and, and look at the timing on this fusion and maybe say maybe I could throw down a couple of solar collectors or something but you can see that my enemy or my ally is calling out that there, there is something coming through right now uh, a, a unit it's only a very low health unit so I immediately throw down a fiend to try and defend and I say you know what I can just reclaim that bad boy and so we do and uh, he, he gets put into an aphis I guess so the fiend is, is just going to chill for the moment and remember, these, these are intentionally put down over here just so that they stay away from everything else. They're not going to cause much of a chain reaction here. So we should be absolutely fine on that front. And you can see how much metal we've got in the bank. And this is just a consequence of having to spread our build power out everywhere. So we haven't really been able to focus. But now that we've got our geothermal online, so it's just shy of the 10 minutes where the advanced geo comes online, uh, we're able to begin really focusing on that aphis and you can see that the build power is now just going to go absolutely crazy and remember that we've got seven amexes in right now seven advanced metal extractors compare that over to Ma mango at the moment i mean he's still getting his up but he's only going to have four right like all he's going to have are four and we've got seven we've almost got double the amount of natural metal that's coming into us for free it's basically like just having a free aphis because th think about this right i, I just want to point something out why do we make an aphis we don't make it to provide us energy we make it to provide us metal because the energy that it provides we convert that into metal so these extra three that we've got over here that are producing 9.2 that's like an ex that's an extra 30 metal that's like an extra aphis that we're just getting for free that's crazy that's crazy man and anyway uh we're having trouble spending all of our resources at this point we very much need to expand our nanos out so i would recommend you know we're on 17 nanos at this point I would reasonably go up to probably something around like 27, 30 nanos uh, at this point, uh, just because you can see we are struggling so much with this. I ideally, the way you want it is so that when your aphis finishes, you have zero metal in the bank. So that's what we're looking to do here. We're just looking to to uh, pump that up. And now moving back all of our constructors, uh, we're also bringing back our um, construction turrets. So th those have come back. Uh, so everything back here, I mean, if we take a look at these little silos, we're also throwing down just additional um, additional energy converters because when our aphis does come up, and you can see we drop our slider down here very intentionally. Um, so w when our aphis comes up, all of our energy converters are going to come online and we're going to have this massive surge in energy and we need to try and meet that with our, uh, our energy demand. So that's what we're going to be looking to do. But our aphis comes up, pretty decent timing here, 11.25. Like th th this is a pretty good timing. You you would expect a similar back timing, uh, back line timing as well. You can see, okay, it looks like 150 Griffin is a little bit slow here in this position. Uh, so he, he's a, a couple of minutes behind, but he, he's still doing pretty well. Um, so our our first Aphis is up, and of course we're just going to the standard, you know, the, the energy converters into um, into more Aphises. But remember, oh, this is something that I encourage people to do is always throw down an anti-nuke after your first aphis there's even a world where i think on a map like this if somebody so we we scouted out that it was um it was hungry punker who is true skill rating six so i said you know the, the risk of me getting nuked from this position and that's like an 11 minute nuke is pretty low 
So I think like the highest chance of me getting nuked is maybe from the blue guy. And I know that that's probably going to be coming in about 13 minutes. So if I can get anti-nuke in, uh, around that timing then i should be okay so i said you know what i'm, I'm just gonna i'm just gonna go with it I, I will also note this that i have become quite a target if people see me in their game they they will they will go for me a, a lot um which i guess kind of influences my decision to go for anti-nuke a lot more than some other people might but i i played one game in particular i remember i, I got nuked by this guy Th this one guy nuked me like six or seven times he did not nuke any of my allies he just nuked me he was like he was nuking my front he was nuking my back he, he nuked my back like four times and i'm just like bro i'm dead like leave me alone please but uh i, I guess that's it right like you just I, I guess when you when you make yourself known to be to be a nuker or to or to be you know one of those the, those I guess more threatening players you will become a target. Um, so I guess that's something to note. Uh, but yeah, so you can see that we we managed to squeeze in a second Aphis here, and we are going to throw down that any nuke. And the reason why we only go for three energy converters here is because we've already got so many uh, energy con or energy converters that are out here, right? Like we've got eighteen that are up here, we've got another ten that are over here. So we we we've already got like plenty of conversion that's coming through so i just i just make sure you know what we're, we're just gonna throw these guys these guys are technically more efficient uh than the other ones but they do cost more metal so just think about it from that perspective right so now from here it's, it's very simple we expand out our construction uh and we do that based on our metal that we're spending so at the moment you see i'm gonna throw down another 12 construction turrets but that's probably the wrong decision here because when i throw down this aphis i'm gonna be able to do an assessment on my metal and and see okay so at the moment i'm i'm eating at a rate of 90. that would be the best way to think about it so you, you'll see right here so we're so ab about 40. so i can do the math here and i can say well if i've got 40 seconds and i'm eating 40 metal every second then i need 1600 metal to survive or to, to make it last until the end so I'm definitely over making nanos here because that was the perfect number. That was how much I had in the bank at the time. So as long as you can just do a little bit of quick math like that, it, it shouldn't be uh, too difficult about knowing how many nanos that you should have. But I think just definitely going for like finishing out a line and, and aiming for, uh, you know, around seven or eight, I think is, is quite reasonable. Now, th this is one of those points. In fact, every, every single APHIS was one of those points where we could have said, does the front need help? Yes, it does. Okay, I'm going to start helping. Do does, you know, does air need help? And judging by the lack of of fighters that are here right now that's probably a a, a pretty big issue uh is you know the, the lack of air because if we go take a look at the enemy fortunately they don't have a lot of air out i mean there's a, there's a little bit here but if a bombing run were to come in we would be absolutely wiped out though that, that's if it hits us first if it doesn't hit us first we should be fine because we can just throw down you know it, it's very quick you just press x you press a you throw a bird shot here you press x a you throw a couple more down here you get to get a whole bunch of your uh your uh sams in from your, your level one just spam them out and that should be enough to hold you as long as they don't hit one of these energy converters but remember that we do kind of silo our base when we're going for this layout i do like i'm a big fan of this because if they do hit an energy converter it will not hit it will not uh, trigger the construction turrets but by the same token the construction turrets won't trigger the energy converter so it, it's nice to have it like that so that's essentially it at this point point. and just remember i mean going forward fr from this i would just say the most important thing is to just uh remain very aware of what your allies are doing because for you this is easy right like you can just take the foot off the gas any to any time you like you can take the foot off the gas and say okay i'm gonna make units right now like very easily we, we could just be making a bot lab and I, I can start spamming out fiends or i can start spamming out you know sumos or something like that uh, it, you know, it, it, it really depends on, on the, the threat of the game. Um, but let's, let's speed it up a little bit because the ne next couple of minutes are, uh, kind of boring. We're just sitting here making APHIS. So it depends on, I, I was actually doing the math on the APHIS. So I, ideally you want to go for, go to eight APHIS and then make your, um, and then make your, uh, your Ragnarok or your, uh, Calamity. But I, I was doing some math and I'm like, well, technically like all, all of your impact comes in from that point. So if you would, if you were able to just bring that down a little bit, how fast can you actually go and still be impactful? And I, I think the answer is somewhere around six to seven Aphis, I think is probably the sweet spot for getting these guys in quickly. So let's, let's speed it up a little bit. I'll put it on 15 X. You can see only a couple of these are, are, are working. So what we're going to do is we're going to throw down all of our, um, all of our, uh, aircraft. So we normally go up to eight, I think eight aircraft pads or eight aircraft plants, uh, is, is the right number. And what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that they, these are on repeat. 
and that we set them to fly. We don't want them to land. We always want them to fly. I don't even know why it, it's set as the default to land. I, it feels so silly to me um, because you just reduce your, uh, your acceleration and mobility so much when you land. Uh, but what we're then doing is just spamming out T1 aircraft here. These guys are much better than your T2 aircraft, just simply because they're faster, they're cheaper, and they've got more build power uh, per cost or per, per unit of metal. Uh, we also throw down a hardened metal storage in case you didn't see that as well. That, that's, that's quite important just because we want to make sure that all of the metal that we are making is going to ourselves or, or that we're using. Uh, so let's speed up a little bit. A little bit of, uh, little bit of uh, FPS drop right now, you will see as we do speed it up. Let's, uh, we could probably reduce it down now. So I, I, I like to make the advanced aircraft plant and then I just make five uh, advanced constructor aircraft. That's it. I don't get any more than that. Just five. Uh, because it, you, realistically, if you lose one or two, uh, you've got three to back you up. But yeah, uh, they're, they're not really that. Um, they're not worth to make any more than that, I don't, I don't think. So our first lot comes out. Uh, if we take a look, we've got 134 construction aircraft now. Uh, so we're going to throw down a Castro. So we're going to jam this area because if the enemy does see that you've got a whole bunch of units here that are, you know, moving around in a circle, they're going to know straight away, okay, something is up right there. Uh, and we're starting this before 20 minutes. And at the moment, it's got three minutes left on it. But remember that behind this, we're still spamming out aircraft. And the idea is we want to keep spamming aircraft until we can spam no more. And that's going to give us a really nice spot because we'll go up to around 220, 230 aircraft, depending on how much metal you've got stacked up. But as you can see, we've got a total of seven APHIS. Uh, and we've also got the advanced geothermal uh, that are just pumping in energy. That's helping us convert a whole bunch of our energy over to metal, which is keeping us afloat. But we're eventually going to be running out of metal. You can see already at the moment, we're kind of in a deficit of about 200. Uh, and that will continue through, uh, through every second uh, that we're making the calamity. We're going to be at that deficit. So it's important that we look to try and find that metal somewhere else. But until we need to, we're going to just keep pumping out. Uh, uh, we, until we need to suck up these aircraft power plants, we're going to continue just making these T1 aircraft and, and spamming them out. We'll speed it up a little bit here just because, well, we... we you know what's going to happen. So we're going to approach zero. Now, zero is def or, so metal is definitely your bottleneck when it comes to doing a build order like this. So you have to be very cognizant uh, of, of your metal income. And th there's a couple of different ways that you can get metal in this position now that you've you've stalled out. So th this definitely isn't the fastest that we could be doing this. Uh, but what we're going to start doing is reclaiming. The first thing that we're going to do is reclaim all of our, um, our aircraft planes because we don't need any more constructors. If we take a look right now, we're sitting on 214, 213 uh, constructor air construction aircraft. Uh, which is more than enough to get this this calamity up on on time. And now we start looking towards our nanos. So what we're going to do is just select all of them. Uh, so you grab them like that and then just tell them, hey guys, uh, start reclaiming each other, please. And just E, 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 E. Uh, there, there's easier ways to do it, but uh, it, it doesn't always work for me. Uh, and then meanwhile, in the middle, so you can see that all of that metal that we've got has now started to bank up. The next place that you can actually pull metal out of is to take all of these construction uh, uh, turrets and actually pull it out of your advanced energy converters because remember these guys are going to be offline the moment that your calamity comes up so you can see it right here the calamity is up at 22 minutes and 18 seconds and with that you know you begin to f for us in this position we're, we're just going to win the game uh, because immediately if we take a look at the enemy base it is it's dead so that's it the enemy immediately reacts so keep that in mind I like to just throw down a little bit of defense to help out the enemy, but as soon as I saw these uh, units on my minimap coming across, I just said, okay, we're going to pull back our aircraft. If we take any shots on here, and you can see that I split them up as well, just so that it minimizes the AOE damage that gets done, if any damage does get done. You can see that one of one of the planes did go down right there, uh, but we managed to make it out alive. And you can see that that's why we got up to five advanced air aircraft rather than one, uh, because if it does go down, now we've got to make that lab again. Uh, so, I mean, behind this... All we're doing is just going back into APHIS. And we've got all of this metal that we can pull out if we need to. Uh, so remember that we've got so much build power right now that it doesn't really matter uh, if, if you suck this up because it, it's only the metal that we care about. We've got so much energy. We've got energy. We've got energy for days. So don't be afraid to suck these up. Ideally, we want to, we want to keep them. Uh, but if, if we start stalling out on things that we need, so here, you know, we're throwing down bird shots. We've got plenty of metal, so I'm not too fussed about it. Uh, but we're going to be throwing down some APHIS so I can pull these guys and, and say, hey, suck this all out but yeah i mean realistically that that's essentially it it's up to you how you want to play it hopefully that gives you a decent framework on how to do the most ridiculous calamity rush in history i don't think i, I i'm pretty confident that's the world record and we're not going to try any faster or any harder than that 
I'm happy with that. And uh, and from here, I'll, I'll bid you guys adieu. If you've got any questions, leave them down in the comments. If you've got any feedback, let me know. And of course, uh, I'll, I'll catch you guys in the next one. And just make sure that you're always very uh, responsive to any kind of threat that your enemy looks to throw at you. As you can see, we are here just... Enemy, enemy trying to sneak in a couple of... Uh, couple of bots over here we ain't going to allow it though that ain't that ain't it that ain't it chief anyway we'll catch you guys in the next one thank you so much for watching